Welcome to All Power Labs and our gasification uh, weekend. My name is Jim Mason. I'm the uh, co-founder and director of All Power Labs. Um, I'll go around a bit and introduce to all the rest of the people in the organization. Um, but I want to quickly give you a little summary of what we're going to do this weekend. Um, and then we're going to go around and try to do quick introductions of who's here. We get a really incredible combination of people that show up at this. Um, many of you come with related interests. so. Uh, even though the, the, the room is getting very large, we want to see if we can go around and take uh, like 15 seconds, introduce yourself, where you're from, what you're interested in. Uh, that'll give you some orientation as to who else is here. Okay? Um, for the rest of the evening, I'm going to be doing a talk on the science and engineering of gasification. I'll give you all the technical foundations of things we're going to be playing, playing with for the rest of the weekend. And for Saturday and Sunday, we're going to be doing various hands-on demonstrations, uh, research projects, and general play. So we've structured this weekend with the goal that we try to do um, a solid amount of information, education, um, a good amount of hands-on demonstration and working with the equipment. So what we've talked about in terms of information gets translated into the physicals. And then some amount of research and play and uh, unstructured uh, metalworking towards unknown ends. Um, so we have one, only one project like that at this time, the, the Lister Spark conversion, but other people typically show up machines um, and other curiosities happen over the weekend that they start. So it turns into progressively a open shop fabrication weekend and you're welcome to build anything you want during the weekend as long as you don't um, cut off your fingers, uh, stick metal in your eyes, things like that. So we do throughout the weekend run a, a open, uncontrolled shop. We have good safety things, but the safety is ultimately you guys um, having good discretion, paying attention to what you're doing, and not doing things that are going to uh, lead to problems. Okay? So, very quickly, All Power Labs um, is, actually, is actually a mistake or uh, it was an unplanned endeavor. Uh, we started in this facility about a decade ago uh, with an endeavor called the Shipyard, which was a facility for large-scale mechanical, kinetic, and electronic art. Uh, it was one of the first facilities where we built a lot of the large-scale Burning Man projects. Um, and so we started in 2001 with the, the last building over here and an open parking lot that we brought in a whole variety of shipping containers and started building buildings out of uh, pre-made shipping container volume. So we'd stack them from side to side, knock walls out. Essentially made a big zocalo, a perimeter of buildings with a shared area in the center. Uh, and this was fantastically functional for the large um, projects we wanted to do. Uh, it was cheap because we were starting with a parking lot. Um, we, were, we were very excited about uh, this kind of, uh, improvisational reuse of, of, of shipping containers for studio purposes, uh, but the city of Berkeley was not very excited about this. Uh, they had some issues with our interpretation of zoning and code, um, and their opening volley was to turn off the power. Um, and we thought that they, the city of Berkeley was not well living up to its ideals of experimentation and general um, promotion of the unusual and what will in the future be dogma and, and given, um, which we felt we were creating this very important model. So we fought them for the next decade. Um, we fought them in the media, legally. Um, we fought them with arts. Uh, and we most importantly fought, fought them by generating power. Um, instead of giving up, we said, well, let's just run the facility off grid. Um, sounds easy enough. Let's get some generator solar panels. Let's go. Um, and that turned into actually a bigger project than any of the artworks that got, got built here. So, for about the next seven years, we ran the facility off-grid, um, founded on something that was called the power tanner, which was a combined battery and inverter um, insulation. The 17,000 pounds of batteries that we got off eBay, they came out of a telecom station. Um, we had 33 kW inverters that we hacked into a three-phase arrangement. Uh, we had a system of a size that we could start large lathes and mills, which used to be in the last room, do any amount of welding. Um, and you know, it was very different than trying to run, run your cabin in the woods um, in an off-grid system. We were trying to run industrial machinery um, in the middle of the city, but totally surrounded by the grid on all sides, except we didn't have it. Um, 
So we made the pool and then the, dis the delivery mechanism um, and then started exploring various forms of power generation conversion. First went to PV, um, you know, uh, experienced various frustrations in that. I got excited about solar, solar thermal stuff, um, various frustrations there, wind, whatnot. I, don't, I won't go through the, the pros and cons of each one, but I got fascinated by gasification. Um, I, I had never heard the word gasification until about six years ago. Um, I'm not trained in it. <coughs> Uh, I went to school of mechanical engineering and wandered off in humanities and social sciences, but I'm kind of back doing the original mechanical engineering. But I wasn't trained to, to do this. But I got completely fascinated with it, consumed all the literature, and set out trying to solve it. Um, and that's all I've done for the last six years, I guess. <laughs> so um, we're what we're trying to do with this is, is um, tame gasification and productize the technology to a point that we can make it a personal scale energy appliance. We're excited about it as a, a very flexible conversion technology that you can take a, a broad range of waste materials and get a broad range of power and products out of it that relates to many of the things that we use fossil fuel for um, as at, at the end user. Um, the end user doesn't just need electricity, they need heat, cooling, shaft power in developing world applications. Um, uh, the biochar um, offtakes of this are very interesting for agri agricultural purposes. The SIN gas stream, stream gives you a lot of opportunities for up-migration into various sorts of liquid fuels. Um, and the waste heat around it allows you to do various interesting things with clean water. So we're interested in, in time. We are trying to create an agnostic converter a box that you can put things in and have a whole variety of co-streams out that you can adjust the varying amounts um, depending on your needs. Okay. And doing that at a personal scale, doing it on the model of a washing machine or a refrigerator or a PC of personal scale energy. So as you can see, we have a couple of steps to go towards that. Um, we've gone a lot of steps. Um, we've reduced a gasifier from a huge plant type installation of separate tanks and vessels and plumbing that you, you treat like a construction project on site. We reduced it down to a pallet. Um, we have done a lot of um, fairly elaborate heat exchange work to get rid of a lot of components you usually have on these things. We used all the waste and heats as inputs back in the system, which allows us to get rid of things, make things smaller and smaller. Um, and over time, you're going to see us start to add on these other co-byproduct streams to it. So that is what we're trying to do. We're trying to create a PC of personal scale energy. And the core technology under that is this highly variable um, process of gasification. And the point of my talk tonight is going, to, is going to explore all the ways in which that process can be pulled apart, controlled, varied, to get to different desired um, outputs. Okay. So there's the the frame of what we're doing here. Um, I'd like to go around and do do quick introductions. Let's start with the All Power Lab people that are here. We're now about 22 people full time. It's been growing um, uh, precipitously, and I don't know. There's probably about 10 here right now, but. Um, let's start with, with Jess. So what I want to do now is give some you know, technical foundation of, of gasification, go through some of the basic science as well as um, the basics in, in the engineering, how it's responded to the, the underlying um, science, and kind of go through a little bit of the design history of, of what we've been doing with our systems. Okay? Uh, and I'll do this very quickly, um, but if you want to stop me dur during it, you can stop and we will answer questions. Okay. I have an initial question. Did you ever answer the question of whether we're working off the grid tonight or not? It, we're on grid now. Uh -huh. well, we, the facility went back on grid about three years ago. Okay. Um, and if you can have the grid, the grid is a much easier thing to do. So at some point, we're going to, to have, have a unit grid down here. Our facility is actually still completely illegal. Um, <laughs> we, we, never were yeah. allowed, we were never allowed to get the permitting back in order, but we caused enough pain to the city that they stopped fighting us. So there's a d detente, okay? <laughs> and actually the, the fire marshal that was the point of trying to shut this down, um, his boutique project is this new building next door, this fire emergency vehicles warehouse. So he now is over there every day watching us 
build our business. Um, and Berkeley's trying to develop this whole kind of green corridor through here, which we're an emerging poster child for it. So they like us, they don't shut us down, but like we can't get any permits. Okay? So even though we stopped them, we're in jeopardy. So like if we want to do a grid tie thing, I can't go and apply for a grid tie, just like the whole sky would fall. You're like, where would they start? So to the degree in which I do it illegally, then you're like debating, well, what can I get away with, not get away with, whatnot. So, but when we took over this building here, this had a legal, this had, had grid. So the building is using, that building over the years is using the, the grid from here. That site over there doesn't have power still. And that's where we did all the, the off-grid stuff. Okay? Um, you know, as we show you the layers of you know, electrical distribution on top of each other. Okay, so gasification. Um, gasification is the operating system of fire. Gasification is the underlying processes and code and um, intrigue that is, that is being mixed together and forming this final single thing that we just call fire. Um, we typically don't know or call out the different processes that are going on, on underneath it, but there are a whole series of, of distinct, distinct and curious events going on there that collectively produce fire. So what I want to, to reveal is some of this underlying operating system. What is going on underneath fire that we can capture, control, and alter the outputs to various desired ends? Okay? And as you get into a gasifier, what you're doing is trying to understand these underlying processes and take progressive control over them individually and direct them towards de desired outputs. Okay? So, uh, I'm going to do the talk a little different tonight than I've done it before. I'm going to, I'm going to explain gas. I'm going to explain gasification four different times in total. Um, I'm going to call this um, uh, down the rabbit hole gasification, four rings of fire, uh, four circles of hell. Uh, I don't know which metaphor to use, but we're going to go four times through this. Okay, and each time we're going to re reveal new layers, new variability in the processes, uh, what have you. So we'll start from very simple and we'll end up in possibly complicated things, which is the pleasure of gasification. The more you look at it, the more you poke at it, the more it really um, reveals new layers of curiosity. Um, I think I like it because it is, it is a completely non-discrete process that you can't get um, you know, a couple inches in it before you're, you're touching all of the, the fundamental sciences and most of the engineering disciplines and most of the trades in, in um, building the responses to it. It is a total generalist problem, or a general specialist problem. To make it work, you've got to touch things over a huge range of science, engineering, and fabrication. Okay? Uh, so it's, I think of it somewhat as a humanities problem in metal. There's nothing really discreet about it in the end. It's a problem of industrial meaning. Okay, so down the rabbit hole into the four rings of fire. Where did it start? Most simple explanation, gasification is incomplete combustion. Um, gasification is most simply thought as a process of choked or incomplete combustion where we start a fire going but don't give it enough oxygen to finish. Thus, that the gases that are, that are coming out of that combustion event still have potential to burn. You haven't given them enough oxygen to burn to completion, um, so when they, um, when the, the emissions from that fire come out, there's still burnable gases in them that you can use. Now this guy's here is cheating, but you know, it's quite similar to what you used to do in a hot rod when you wanted to get, get flames to go out the exhaust. Um, you pull the choke, hit the throttle, and you wouldn't get enough air into the engine, so the heat would break down the fuel into various gases, and the gases would come out the exhaust, and you could light them on the end. Okay? If you were to let the full air come into the engine, you would burn the gas, fuel and air completely, you'd have carbon dioxide and water vapor as a result, and you would have no burnable gases coming out the exhaust. Okay? So that's how we used to make flames and hot rods. This guy's cheating and dumping gasoline drain exhaust pipes. That's a little more than you can get.